What's up, everybody? Shawnee D Man here, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to another episode of Nerd Talk with Shawnee D, Shawnee D Man. Hope you guys are doing great. And I am joined with another guest. We're very excited to have her on. So please tell everybody who's watching and listening, tell us who you are. Hi, everyone. My name's Athena Rose. Uh, I go by Death Takes Presents. Um, on Instagram, on a bunch of different sites. But hi, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> um, very excited to have her on. We uh, we've been talking for the past couple of weeks, um, getting this planned out and and finding the best time to do it. And this was a good time to do it. So I'm very excited to have her on. Um, I came across your page a while back. Um. I don't remember the. Fr I think the first pi first picture I saw on your Instagram that I came across was uh, might have been your Raven cosplay. It may have yeah, been that, that one. It may yeah. have been that one. Um, yeah, that way, that's a good one to find. Yes, <laughs> it is. I mean, li listen, they're all all your cosplays are are you know fantastic, and I enjoyed all of them. Um, so tell us before so before we get in, into all that, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh tell us what got you into cosplaying. Um there's there's two versions of the how I got into cosplay story. There's the really cute one, uh where I've literally been going to like Ren Fairs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um since I was a toddler, my mom took me to my very first friend fair when I was like itty bitty in matching outfits. Oh, okay. um, and then there's the not so cute story uh, <laughs> where a uh, long time ago, uh, my first girlfriend um, wanted to go to Anime Expo dressed as Lulu and Yuna from Final Fantasy X. Mm. Um, but that ended up falling through because we broke up. But oh. I was just like, you know what? I still want to go to this con. I still want to dress up. I didn't wear Lulu. I haven't cosplayed Lulu. She's sitting in a closet somewhere in a box <laughs> in storage. Uh. Um, but we'll, we'll see if that ever gets pulled out. That's the less cute story, but uh, we'll stick with the I've been, I've been dressing up and going to Ren Fair since I was a toddler story. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so that sounds very... Very fun. So your mom took you when you were just a kid, and that is that what got you like into it then? Uh, yeah, I think so. Honestly, it's one of those things where my mother was a ballet dancer. Okay. I've been into theater. Um, I literally just seemed like the most natural course of action, um, being able to dress up and go to these nerdy... Uh, environments mm -hmm. it, it just it seems literally like the most natural thing in the world to me i was i got there i'm just like oh my god my people <laughs> <laughs> um so i can't say it was ever just one thing that got me into cosplay it was just always something that i wanted to do and i finally did it <laughs> and then, and and it's just been it's been going for it. how so how long how many uh so other than the uh ren fair one how, how long have you like actually uh, been cosplaying? Uh, since at least 2009, I Oh, think. wow. Uh, maybe, maybe longer than that. Maybe, like, 08. So it's been a while. I've been, I've been around the con scene for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you're, you're, so I, I think, I believe out of all the guests I've had on, you're probably the one that has been doing it the longest. Most of them that I've had on, I think they've been doing it at least the past um, four or five years. You're the longest one. That's impressive. That's, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm old, guys. I'm 466 years old. I'm going to be 467 <laughs> in May. Um, I'm, I'm old, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but, you still, but you still look good. I mean... Like I yeah. said before, looking at your cosplays, hey, you you still got it. So I wouldn't wouldn't worry about the age factor. That's for sure. Um, so how many cons have so you've been to? Have you so you've been to cons where you live? Have you ventured out to any other state for cons, or has it just been primarily where you live? 
Um, I've done Wizard World Austin. I think I did that back in 2016 or 2017. Um, but generally, for the most part, I've stuck to um, California conventions. Oh, wow. Um, so Anime Expo, San Diego, uh, did WonderCon. So, like, when WonderCon went, went down to the L.A. area, that was, like, amazing for me. Um but there, there was also back and forth because <laughs> mm. I, it's it's been a whole thing. But yeah, I've, I've done like uh, Wizard World Austin, and then when I live in Texas, I've gone to California for con. So that technically does qualify as out of state. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so you've never been to but like anywhere, to- anywhere in the eat, like no New York Comic Con, nothing like that. No, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to go to New York Comic Con. I've always wanted to go to, uh, like, Hallmat for, like, the holiday conventions because those costumes look so fun. And I love seeing how creative everyone gets with it, putting their holiday spin on their costumes. I'm like, I wish I was that creative. Um, I've always wanted to go to Emerald City Comic Con. Um, There are all of these really cool conventions, and I haven't into them i want to go to mcm in uh in london that would be fantastic oh, wow. um there are these great cons with these great communities and i haven't been to any of them and i want to go maybe <laughs> one day <laughs> just gotta just gotta find a time i guess that's just that's this there's, there's a lot there's, there's a lot over the place so um <laughs> Sure, you'll you'll get a chance to go to uh, one of those eventually. Fingers crossed. One. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about your your cosplays, and so you've you've done a lot. Um, I'm trying to what which one has which which one is your favorite? The dreaded. Which one's your favorite? Uh it changes. <laughs> or it let, changes. Me, let me say, let me rephrase this. What's what's your top five favorite that you've done? That one's hard to <laughs> No, it, it's it's one of those things where my interests are constantly changing, my skills okay. are constantly improving. Right. Um, so I have like favorite characters that I'll do and I'll go back. Um so but it's hard for me to pick a favorite because they're all so important and kind of personal to me. Okay. So somebody be like, Oh, I loved your uh, gender bent John Constantine. I'm like, Yes, that was an amazing costume, that was an amazing <laughs> shoot. And then somebody will bring up, like, oh, I, I love your Tifa. I'm like, oh, my God, that was my that was amazing. That's my favorite. Um, it's really hard for me to put one above another. Right. Because there were so, th- th- there are so many aspects I love about each of the costumes and aspects I hate about them. Um, but each one was just so much fun to work on. And I had such great experiences wearing them either to cons or to shoots. Um, that it's hard for me to ever, ever just pick a favorite. I love all of them, like my children. <laughs> <laughs> You've been They're posting. Like my, a, I love all of them so much. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You've been posting a lot. No, well, not a lot. I guess, but you. I know. I noticed you like you've uploaded a lot more of, of like some Raven cosplays that you've done. Uh, I do. I I like that one. Uh, your black cat is great. Um, let's see. What were the other ones? What were the other ones? You did some really cool ones. There was one where, like, you had, like, this might have been more close to your, the Ren Fair you were talking about. You had, like, the, the fur coat and the long sword. Or is that? Oh, yeah, that was, um, that was Yennefer from the first season of the Netflix Witcher show. See, I like, I like uh, that one. That one was really that cool. That one is a beast. It took me forever to make, um, I, I sewed it at like the beginning of like a snowstorm in Texas. Really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting and working on it. It's like snowing outside. Um, but yeah, no, that one. Oh, that fabric. That fabric was so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so pretty. let's see, what was it? You, did you do, uh, let's see, you did a rogue from X-Men. I like that one. Uh, I've a, done yeah. several versions of Rogue at this point. I have oh, a writing yeah. list on my yeah, phone. I, I, w- I, um, I went through your entire page and I was just, just checking out your page. I was like, she's done a lot of Rogues. Yeah, I, I've done a running list between who I've cosplayed more versions of Rogue or Bulma from Dragon Ball. Oh. Um, 
And Bulma wins because Bulma has more costumes. <laughs> and then, um, um, what else was it? Let's see. You did, uh, I believe it's uh, Sailor Mars from Sailor Moon. You did that one. That one was cool as well. Um, that one you, was a fun one. That one was like very much, hey, your inner child wants to do this. <laughs> So you just okay. let it do it. It has to happen. That's <laughs> the thing. I get fixated on costumes. If I don't cosplay this specific character, I will die. And so then I have to, like, hyper-focus and work on this one costume or I'll die. And, like, you you need to work on these other projects. Mm, what's, uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what's, um... Which cosplay that, you, that you've done, which one was the longest for you to make? Oh, good lord. Uh... <laughs> That, I'm sure a good. I'm sure a play. lot of them, but the longest one to make. Oh, now I have to look through. Um, because <laughs> they're. I want to recently Kita from Atlantis. That was a labor of love and okay. blood. There's literal blood on that costume because <laughs> oh, I stabbed oh, myself with a needle. Oh. Um, all, there's a bunch of hand beating. On, oh, on the skirt, okay. Okay. so that took forever. I had to build the armor for it. Um, I'm trying to think what took the longest. Um, because yeah, that one, that that one in recent memory comes to mind. Uh, see now, now I'm going through my Instagram. The, <laughs> the coat you were ta talking about mm -hmm. that's entirely hand sewn. So that took me a while because I had oh, to man. do it. So that was entirely hand sewn. It's fully lined. It is so comfortable, and I love it. Um, you just wear it just to wear it at times. I bet it's in storage right now, unfortunately. Oh, well, um, well, at least now you know if there's a snowstorm, you have you have I it. Have something more. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I think those were like the longest in recent memory. Those two took the longest. Otherwise, everything else wasn't too bad i have nothing but like the highest regard for cosplayers for like oh yeah i pumped 500 hours into this cosplay all of this is hand beaded all of this is hand i'm like oh my god how do you do like the patience <laughs> it has to take and the dedication that these yeah. cosplayers have for their crafts i'm like oh my god see i don't know if i can do that <laughs> because then i'll get my next hyper fixation and have to go focus um but no, like, seeing the, the work that these cosplayers do, I have nothing but, like, the utmost respect and awe for them that they're able to dedicate that much time and detail to one project. And then they just come out beautifully. And it's it's really inspiring. I wish I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you but, I mean, you've put in a lot of work in with yours as well. They all look, they all look great, like I said. Um... What's what's a project that you got going on right now that you're working on? Uh, right now, I am trying to put together Saya from Blood the Last Vampire, Blood Plus. It's a bit of an older, mm. older anime. Um, <laughs> okay, because I never heard of it. So. I... <laughs> it's good. It's good. I highly recommend you check it out. It has <laughs> vampires in it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very it's a very simple it's basically just like a black school girl you know school girl uniform and i got the idea to like kind of go back to that one because there's this um there's this t-shirt website and they have like really cool like t-shirts every day and they swapped it out and it had um wednesday from the Wednesday Netflix right. show, mm -hmm. uh, and like a schoolgirl uniform, and she had like a a katana, and she had like these different weapons. And I was looking at it, I'm like, this is just Saya. This is they they <laughs> literally just took the Saya design and they said it was Wednesday. So I'm like, I should cosplay Saya. It'd be fun. Um, so that's the next one I'm working on. So hopefully that one will get done soon. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. I like the mouse I ride shirt, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. It's like my favorite show ever. It's like my comfort show. It has like tour dates and stuff on the back, which oh, yeah. is really cool. Oh. Um, uh. <laughs> I love no. I love this shirt. I love this. It's like my favorite show. <laughs> so, uh, so what? Are, so, what's uh? 
Yeah. So, well, so what's your what's your favorite kind of shows that you like to watch? I know we just I know I just mentioned the the shirt, but what's other shows that you enjoy? Um, I like fantasy shows um a lot. I, so mm. Wheel of Time is Never really good it. on Amazon. I um, heard mixed reviews about it. Series? Uh, it's one of those things which based off of a book series, right. and it's one of those things where I've never read the books, right? So I think, oh, this is really fun. But I know people who've read the books, like, oh, oh my god, yeah. this is the worst thing ever. Yes. And I'm like, I get that. I respect that. I am a purist. I I have very strong feelings about Witcher season two. And yeah, see, that's a, yeah, that. that's the same thing. Because like <laughs> the Witcher, I would say uh, the Halo TV series. There's like certain shows that have that have like books and comics and stuff like that. Like I've never read them, and so I, I would go into these shows watching them with like fresh eyes, and I'm like, oh man, this show's really good. And then somebody who who's read the books or something like that, we're like, oh, this was just terrible. They didn't they didn't do this this. I was like, oh, okay, I just thought it was a good show. Okay, that's fine. So see, it's interesting for me because like. I like with Witcher, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hadn't read the books before. Uh, watched the first scene. I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is really cool." So then I went and I read all of the books, and I'm just like, "Okay, cool. We're prepped for season two. And <laughs> like, oh, they could do all these different things, and this is probably where they're going to end season two with this really big battle. And then we get into season two, and I'm like. Oh, this is character assassination. <laughs> I get it. Oh my gosh. I like I said, I have very strong feelings with how they handled certain like Yen, the way they handled Yennefer. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, it is it is character assassination at its finest. Um and I, I understand that they have to like change things to make them more uh, adaptable for for TV, for movies. I, I understand that. Um, and they're, and they need to introduce conflict because Yen isn't in a lot of the books. Like they talk about her, mm -hmm. they reference her, but she's not actually there because she's just like, I'm going to go do this other thing. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I understand them wanting to give her a, a, a plot, something to do. Um, but there are ways within the universe that were established that could have achieved the same thing that they they wanted mm -hmm. that they didn't do. And in doing what they did with season two, they they assassinated her character. And I'm like, this oh. isn't yeah, this this isn't our you know cold hearted but kind of loving Jennifer. <laughs> so, I literally wear lilac and gooseberry perfume. <laughs> I have, I have a but, but I know, like, because um, the uh, the first episode of The Last of Us came out the other week, the other day, and uh, I've never played the games. I don't know anything about it, but I, what I've seen people talk about it is this: uh, like, the first episode was almost basically like frame by frame in step with what the vi the first game was. So I like. It. Hey, listen, it's and a lot of people I liked it for somebody who doesn't know. You know, a lot of the source material, things like that. I enjoyed watching. I was like, this is a pretty interesting show. This is, it could be one of the greatest shows created if they keep that same level of, of detail and work that they put into it. It could be a really good show. I think what contributes to this, um, like, is because, like, the writers um, and the showrunners are the same people that worked on the game The Last of Us. So okay. it's, they're interpreting their own work, so they they know what they need to put in that in there. And we've seen a lot of other success for shows like that, like Good Omens on again Amazon Prime. <laughs> I I promise I'm not a corporate job. I promise. I'm not. I'm not um, judging. <laughs> um, Neil Gaiman was the showrunner for Good Omens, and he was the scriptwriter for Good Omens. And a lot of the uh, stuff that was included, like the newer content. Mm -hmm. was a lot of stuff that was going to be uh, in the sequel, in the sequel book that he had been working on with Terry Pratchett that he included in the first season. And so it matches tone. It's technically canon. It was going going to be canon. Um, and you can tell he has a lot of love for his work. And so you're, you're, and it was a good show. Like totally mm -hmm. it matched the, 
the book. And so we're getting that with The Last of Us because it was the same people working on the game, um, working on the show. So they have they already have a great love for the project. They already know these characters really, really well. They already know, excuse me, they already know like the beats that they need to hit. Right. Um, and, and how to tell this story. Um, so, so I think that's, we're, we're, we saw that with the book adaptations. Now we're starting to see it with video games. And this is how you adapt video games. You, you get the people who made the games and they're just like, here, have some money, make a TV show. <laughs> yeah, because like, like honestly, lately, certain, so when they first started to do like live, like live action movie video game adaptations, they weren't very good. But you get like Detective Pikachu, which was really good. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, one of the better movie uh, game to movie adaptation there's been. That is, it sets the bar high. And then uh, oh, there's another one, uh, The Last of Us. And, uh, and then we're kind of going to see what's going to happen. It's not live action, but we'll see what happens with the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, from everything that, from the trailer and everything, it looks good. Um, but we'll have to just see how that plays out. And I feel like there's another one. Because I, I remember, because I love playing the Tomb Raider series that came out in like 2013, uh, 15, 18, something around that range. Uh, but then they did the, the live action, another reboot live action movie of it. And it just wasn't as good. And I was just like, ah, this is not that great. Like you had the game right there. I mean, they somewhat followed the game. But it's just I don't know what it was about the movie. That I was just kind of like I don't I don't like this. It's just not very good. Like I I never saw the movie because just looking at the trailers and looking at the stills and stuff. Because I I love my Tomb Raider. I love my Tomb Raider. <laughs> um, I have I have Lara Croft cosplays. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. No. Looking at it, it just it was missing. Uh, je ne sais quoi. That, that certain je ne sais quoi, that, that certain spark that made mm. Lara Lara. Um, it seemed like they had, like, the grittiness down, but they didn't have the... The op the, the over the triumph. Oh, That's yeah. that first Tomb Raider. Yeah. You know, where she's really overcoming and kind of coming into her own. Yeah. Definitely. But that's just what I got from like the trailers. I don't know if somebody loves the movie and they're like, oh my god, no, it's the greatest movie ever. Shut up. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry. It's, it's decent, but but it's not as good as the Angelia Jolie's Tomb Raider versions. Um, but it's still, it's, it's good enough. Um, and then, let's see. What else was there? Uh, Transformers. Yeah, you know, live action from a games and TV shows. The, uh, I enjoyed the first... The first three Transformers were good, but then I was, afterwards I was kind of like, I'm kind of done with them until until Bumblebee came out. I was like, okay, I'm into Transformers again, and now we're getting the newest one here pretty soon. So... Mm, we'll see. We, we will definitely see. If you um, ever want to know what I was like at 18, just Watch the Bumblebee movie. <laughs> that girl is just what I was like. Oh my God. Is that how, is that how you was back then? Yeah, it was kind of. Yeah, I felt yeah. personally attacked by the movie. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> just kind of like slowly sticking in your chair. Yep, this is a. Uh, this, this, this is hitting pretty home for me. So just the. <laughs> <laughs> No. So I see you got like some Funko Pops back there, uh, a lightsaber. That's oh, oh, okay. so yeah, we've got a Revan's Revan's lightsaber. Okay. Um, many, many anime pops, I statues. See. A lot of it's um, unpacked. A lot of it's uh, D and D stuff. I, oh, D I, um, I do love D and D group. Oh, I really? Have, like, How's that? On first edition D and D. So, like, literally, I learned how to play D&D &D on first edition. Um, really? My mom's uh, husband, my, my stepdad, um, he was into D&D &D in high school. He learned 
on the first edition stuff. So in high school, he taught me how to play on first edition. <laughs> um, so now that we're playing fifth edition, I'm like, oh my god, it's so easy. All I do is roll this one die for everything. <laughs> but yeah. And a bunch of Star Wars toys because I love Star Wars. I'm I'm wearing I'm literally wearing an Ahsoka ring right now because I'm, I love Ahsoka. Yeah. Ahsoka is his life. She's big. I, I do love Star Wars, so uh, as well. Um, <laughs> so D and so D and D, are you like play? Are you like in a campaign right now, or is this, when's the last time you played? Uh, yeah, so we try to have a weekly game. The last time I played was last Saturday. Normally okay. we play on Saturdays, um, but a couple of, of uh, one of our players is going to uh, IckyCon this weekend in Austin. Um, and then one of our other players is going on holiday next weekend. So we're taking a couple of weeks off, but we try to play every week. Um, but we're actually running the uh, Curse of Strahd campaign. Oh, which is a lot okay. of fun. And I'm playing okay. a human warlock. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's just so I could play John Constantine and D. That, that makes sense. That that makes sense. Because <laughs> um, me and some friends, we played a while back, and we uh, <laughs> we got like I was DMing, and I had to see of my friends from work, and we got it. They were getting into an argument about the cost of a sword in the store. They went to a town, and they were, and she wanted my friend wanted to buy a sword, and so we were just talking, and then we went into a full blown argument about. How much the sword's gonna cost? And uh, my other friend, she she was a druid, and so she wild shaped into just like a regular house cat, and stole a club out of the store. And we we're just like, "What are you doing?" She was like, "Yeah, I'm busy, so I'm taking this club." I was like, "All right, I, all right, we'll let it roll then." I, I love your friend. That's that's a player after my own heart. <laughs> in my first campaign, um, I played a tabaxi rogue. She was little. Her name's Mao, and I love her. Um, she's actually based off of one of my cats. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's like, you guys are taking like we they were they were talking to pixies or fairies or something, and they're like, okay, we'll let you have this mirror, but you have to go shave this uh, goat. You know, it'll be funny, and the party's like debating about what to do, mm -hmm. and so then Mouse just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna take this mirror. It's mine now. Bye. And then <laughs> ran. So oh, yeah. I like, I like your friend. Your friend is great minds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, but it's been a while since I've since I've played D and D. Uh, I need to get, I need to get back into it. Uh, but because D and D's fun, I I enjoy D and D. Um, I'm excited to see the movie for when that comes out. Um, the trailer that makes it look good. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, it, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited either way. So I don't care. If see, it, I'm I don't... one of those people. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm, I'm like a bit of a. I'm just like, all right, please don't ruin it. <laughs> I, and I've gotten to the point where I've kind of stopped watching trailers. So I'm just kind of looking at stills and stuff from it. Right. So I'm just like, please be good. Please right. Be good. But like, uh, to, to see other people get like really hyped and excited about it, I'm like, oh, I wish I could. Oh, it's like unbridled joy. And I'm mm -hmm. so excited for other people. I'm just more reserved myself. So like, please, like, share your unbridled joy with me. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody should play some D&D. &D. It's a great way to... Hang out and just have fun. Do you? Oh, yeah, uh, no, I think everybody should play at least one campaign. Yep. Even if it's just true. a one shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about video games? Do you play video games? I love video games. Video games. I actually used to work for GameStop. I don't need more. Uh, oh. I hate GameStop. Uh, um, but I'm actually uh, playing Pokemon Violet right now. Oh, oh okay. Okay. I, I haven't played any Pokemon games since. Um, Fire Red and Leaf Green came out because uh, I grew up with Pokemon, and so I, I was I was I was around when the first episode of of the original Pokemon series premiered in the U.S. Love and I love Pokemon, but I kind of just fell out of it just because it's just I got busy with other things, and but now but now they've actually concluded Ash's story, and so I was just like, look at that. 
I spent about 25 years of my life. And this is the moment that has finally come to happen. I'm glad I got to see it before I die. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was I was I was of the belief of like, oh, he's just gonna be eternally ten. Like he just yeah. he's he's gonna constantly, you know, fail and he's just gonna be ten and he's just gonna journey forever. And then he actually he, he became Pokemon. I'm like, oh wow. I know, it's, I was so <laughs> surprised. I was like, oh wow, this is a turn of events. I was not expecting this. So <laughs> but now they're working on a new series with some new characters, so Definitely we'll have to see how that shapes out uh, in the future. Um, what other video games do you like other than the Pokemon? Uh, playing Pokemon Violet right now. Um, obviously, Witcher. I love Witcher. Um, love it. Super excited for the new one that they've announced. I know it's a couple years out, but I'm just like, yes, please. <laughs> Give me my new Witcher game. Give me my Witcher 1 remake. Um, Borderlands. I love the Borderlands series. They are some of my favorite um, first-person shooters like ever. I love the cell shading. I love the story. I love the humor. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Mm. Um Tiny Tina Wonderlands, Bunkers and Badasses. I was like, yes, give me my D&D fix. Give me my Borderlands <laughs> uh, mechanics. Yes, I was. it's so much fun. It is so much fun. Um, I've stolen one-liners oh. from uh, Tiny Tina Wonderland. And I've actually used them in my D&D. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they're, like, when they're, like, idle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um... They had some great one-liners, so I actually kind of lifted them and used them in my in, in oh, the D, in my in the D and D campaign because I'm just like oh, I'm not clever enough to come up with things myself. I'm just going to line steal. <laughs> Shame. Hey, hey, as long as it works out, nobody nobody will judge you on that. As long as nobody knows, no this one is will true. judge me. Oh, yeah, that's that's very true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> uh, let's see. What about uh? Skyrim. Do you like Skyrim? I like Skyrim. Like any fantasy game, I think is is great. It's, oh, yeah, um, it's up your it, alley. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Like any fantasy game, I'm just like, yes, give it to me. I am very um, excited for Hogwarts Legacy. Um, uh, although I'm gonna have to wait to buy it because originally I was gonna buy it in February, so I didn't realize this was the case because. When they, when, when they, uh, well, a couple of months ago, they announced they were delaying it till April. I said, okay, well, that's going to be, you know, all platforms. And then I realized, no, uh, the newer consoles and the, the next gen consoles, PS5, Xbox Series, and X, and, uh, and PC, they're getting it in February. Everybody else has to wait till April to get it. And I, I do have a PC. But right now, I'm building a new PC. So the current one I have right now cannot handle the requirements for that game. And so now, like, I was like, oh, now I'm upset because now I have to wait until this computer is built in order for me to play the game. So. Okay. I mean, it's, it's the anticipation is terrible. I hope it lasts. That's that's the quote, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I have to like, try to avoid like watching gameplay because I don't want nothing spoiled for me. So I'm going to like kind of dodge TikTok and YouTube and all that, just so I don't see anything. Oh no, I'm the same way. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, I want to go in completely blind. Right. Um, I'm probably going to pick up my copy secondhand. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's there's a lot of complexities right. around with with jk rowling oh for yeah, yeah obvious reasons she is a far less than seller person um but the harry potter franchise has obviously brought a lot of joy and oh yeah you know it's been the, the game and the game has been like like pre-ordering like crazy and people have been massively pre-ordering the game so at the, i mean at the end of the day people love harry potter and people are going to you know, get the things that they love. And so... Exactly. You know, it's one of the things just like, I I, I like Harry Potter. Um, yeah. It's it's a bit diminished now, obviously, because of the creator. And then you get into the argument, well, can you separate the creator from the content? And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, if the creator put a lot of stuff in the content, mm -hmm. you, you yeah. kind of have to <laughs> be able to kind of sift through that. Um, 
and it's one of those things where I, I would like to play the game, I'd like to support the developers, but oh, yeah. ultimately, yeah. at the end of the day, it's just like, whose name are we supporting? Right. So I would much rather support a scalper, <laughs> a small <laughs> business owner, <laughs> uh, than, than support J.K. Rowling. Uh, directly so I, i'm gonna be purchasing my my copy second hand yeah um, folks have been pretty wild on uh not not from a bad like a, a rude perspective but people have been like really posting and just making funny jokes about how they're gonna um <laughs> just just they're gonna make i thought i saw someone on tiktok say and they were like i want to make voldemort look like the good guy after i'm done with this game i was like oh my gosh these people are like they're, they're ready for it they're ready to have some fun with this game it's it, it could be a top tier game for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see how it does, like post release. I want. Yeah. I'm, I'm super curious about the story and like the lore because that looks really interesting. Right. Um. And just, I'm curious to see how it's gonna do, like, compared to like other games that we're gonna be getting later on this year. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. All right, guys. I think that is the it for this episode of Nerd Talk, Shauna D. Man. I am so glad to have Athena on. She was very fun, very enjoyable to talk with. Uh, as per usual, she'll be up on her screen now. But they, these are all the ways that you can follow her and support her. I highly recommend it. She, she, you're gonna love her cosplays. I love her cosplays. They, they all look great. Maybe she should make a calendar and sell her cosplay calendars or something like that they're great and um uh, but for everybody so tell us one last time for everybody who may be listening on podcasts how can they follow and support you uh you can find me on instagram uh death takes precedence i do have a tiktok uh by the same handle um and then i do have an only fans as well uh you can find the link in my instagram bio for that on uh, some, some spicy content guys. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, if you could support me, that would be awesome. Obviously, you don't have to, but please check my stuff out. I try to make stuff entertaining. I try to post consistently, um, but I'm kind of boring. <laughs> she's not, she's not boring. Kind of boring. She, she's not boring. She, no, she's not boring. She's very fun. But other than that, you guys, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure to check out the channel as well. Plenty of content going on. We are right now going through our Star Wars Battlefront 2 series. Also, our Halo War series. So be sure to check those out as well. Other than that, we'll catch you guys later. See ya.